Hey everyone, I hope this video finds you well and making the most of this beautiful day. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Christopher. If you like luxury, lifestyle, planning and organization, product reviews and skincare, look no further, my friend, because this place is for you. So go ahead and click that little red subscribe button. And if you're going to hang out here on YouTube, you might as well hop on over to my Instagram and join the community over there as well. It is fast growing. I post daily and it's a great way for us to have touch points all the time. I will go ahead and leave my handle right here on the screen. I hope to catch up with you over there on Instagram. I am so excited about today's video. I am going to be reviewing eight planners in detail just for you. If you're like me, I like to switch out my planners every once in a while, but they're a huge investment. So what I want to do is go through eight planners that are currently on the market and walk them through with you so you know exactly what you're getting. I hope you find this video helpful. I plan on doing a lot more like this in the future, so definitely give it a thumbs up if you like these walkthroughs. I know as a planner nerd, I just want every opportunity to see what planners are out there, so when I do decide to invest my money in something, I know exactly what I'm getting. I will also let you know for you beginner planners out there that I have a couple different price points for these planners. So if you're just dabbling with it and want to see if it sticks, I have some planners that work really well within that price range that won't take a big chunk of your money before knowing if you're truly a planner nerd at all. Heart. Like always, I will link every single planner down below so you can easily find it, easily access it, and order it if you are interested. If you have any questions that don't get answered in this review, make sure to leave a comment down below. As you know, I answer every single comment here on my YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive on in. The first planner we're going to talk about is this one from TF Publishing. This one runs from July 2017 to June 2018, so people going back to school or starting a new job, this is a really great planner that will pick up right away for you. It is a simple planner at a very low price point. I believe it's under $10. So this is a great way to figure out if planning is something that you're super interested in without it costing you a lot of money. It is a very, very simple layout. So you have a year at a glance, as well as some notes and to-do boxes that might be taking place throughout the year that you don't wanna forget. And then it goes into your monthly spreads. What I do like about this are the colors are really rich and you have all your months right at the front. After you get through your months, then you get to your normal weekly spreads. I think they're very simplistic. It is a week for two pages, so you have your days of the week running down the side. You have notes, a place for urgent messages, and just a to-do list. The weekly color scheme aligns with the month, so as you go to a different month, the color scheme matches that monthly layout. That really is all that is in this planner. I think it is super simple, especially for a student or anyone just beginning the planning process. It gives you just enough space to write, and I think it's a really great option. The next planner we're gonna talk about is the Bomb Bomb Planner, and this is in the in the universe theme, which I really like all the space creatures that are happening on the front cover. The cover is a really heavy plastic sleeve, so it does feel like it'll wear really well and be really well protected. Now, this planner is just for people who like simplicity because there isn't a lot to it, but I think that's also one of the reasons why so many people would love it. When you open it up, you go to this great yearly plan page. I think this is such a great layout that I wanna incorporate into my bullet journaling it has every month of the year and all the days of the month, and it just gives you a small grid spot to jot down anything that is most important or highest leverage within those 12 months. I think it gives you a really nice spread of what your year will look like. It's a great place to track birthdays and holidays and things of that nature, as well as like really important due dates for things at school or work. After that, you go into your monthly spread, and yes, it is undated. And for me, I actually don't mind something that is undated because then I know that I can always go back and use it. I also know that if I start using it and give it a break, I can also go back to it and still make it work for my life. One tip I would have around things that are undated is don't be the crazy person who goes and dates it for the entire year. Only date it for the portion of time that you're using it. That way, if you wanna go back, you can. What I enjoy about these monthly layouts is that they really do have some beautiful graphics 
as they go that are not too distracting but also add a lot of character to this specific planner. After the monthly undated calendars, you get into this section of these lined pages. Each lined page is divided in half. So you're getting four on a page, which actually works out really well to get four weeks for the month. If you don't have a lot to write about, one of these definitely would work for one whole week planning based on how you set it up. And I went through and counted and it gives you more than enough for each of those boxes to be a week for the entire year. I think this planner is a really good option for someone who just really needs to scope out some months and tag some important dates, as well as someone who doesn't need a ton of space for weekly write-ups and scheduling. I just really like this option, especially for college kids, for school kids. Um, I also just really like it for me because I really enjoy the graphics and the paper quality is really great. I think for the price point, it runs around $20, $25. It is expensive, but the quality of the paper, the durability of the cover is all there. So I think that this is a really great option for so many. The next planner I'm gonna talk about, and I'm sure many of you have seen this online, is the Minimalist Undated Day Planner. Once again, I really like an undated planner because if I decide not to use this this year, if I decide to use it half of the year, I can always go back and reuse it as long as I don't go and predate everything ahead of time. So I enjoy an undated planner. What I think about this planner is the title is very true. It is the minimalist planner. There's a place to put your personal information and then a really nice goal tracking that you can do for a year. So what I really enjoy about the way they set up this goal tracking is that they did self, relationships, and world. And I think that's a really clever way to break the goals apart. After that, you also have monthly goal tracking, and I do really enjoy the monthly spread that they do. It is really simple. It all fits on one page, which does automatically reduce your ability to write a lot in the monthly boxes, but I think for a minimalist planner, you're not writing everything about life, so this would probably really work for you. My suggestion would be to invest in a really good fine tip pen so that you can fit as much as you need into each box. Then after the monthly spreads, you get your undated weekly spreads. I think they did a really good job of splitting this up. So at the top, you have a place just for goals and notes. Then you have your days of the week that stretch across. They do make Saturday and Sunday smaller, which so many planners do, but I do like that they keep them separated and don't combine them just as a weekend box. Then below each of the days of the week, you have a 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. timed scale. You guys all know if you've watched any of my planner videos, I love to stamp things by time because I find if you really wanna fit everything into your day, you have to give it a time. So I do really enjoy these hourly stamps. I wish it started a little earlier and ended a little earlier, but that's just my lifestyle. I'm never up till 10 p.m. And then lastly, there's a place just to sketch or journal, which I really enjoy for someone who likes to track the weather. If you're like someone who likes to track gratitude, it has a place for you to do that. After that, it is pretty much the same. Now, my hangups with this planner. It does have the nice plastic cover, great but I will say the paper quality isn't really there. I did try using some of my Tombow pens as well as some of my micro line pens that I love, and they did show some traces of bleeding through. Not a lot, but they did show some bleeding through, and that's just because the paper quality is not super, super thick. The other thing that I think this planner is really missing are tabs. If you want to get to something quickly, you need to have some sort of tabbing system. But I also understand why they didn't do that because it is an undated planner. But I also think you can get on Etsy and buy some blank tabs or data tabs once you're committed to this and add them in. I think it would make it a lot easier to navigate. And my last thing is I think the spirals are a hair too little because sometimes it does get a little bit difficult to flip. And if you hear that, you can hear where the pages catch on each other because the spirals are just a little bit too small. But overall, if you're someone who doesn't want a lot of writing, who wants a nice, simple, minimalistic <laughs> um, type of planning, I think this could be a really great option for you at a really good price point.
I promised to bring a couple little niche planners that really weren't like a weekly or monthly spread type planner and I have two of those in this video for you. And the first one we're going to talk about, and I'm probably going to say her name wrong, is Emily Lay, Emily Lee. I'm sorry, one of you have already corrected me on this, but I totally forget. Um, but anyway, it is her home base binder planner, and I love this. Let me tell you a few things before we dive in. The colors on the paper are so vibrant. Also, the paper quality of this is absolutely outstanding. I am so excited to start filling this up and using it. I've been waiting till the filming of this video was complete, so you better believe you'll be getting a whole walkthrough of this once I start filling it up and I have a lot to put in it. What I love about this is it really just breaks it down into simple things to keep your home organized. So there's a family perpetual calendar. There's also a place for contacts. There's a place for house projects, meal planning, finances, and then lastly, a section that's just called heart, which I really enjoy, and I'll talk to you about that a little bit more once we get to it. Between each section, and I have to show you, are beautiful, high quality, super pigmented and bright dividers with gold embossing. Um, this is the family section, so once you get into it, there's the perpetual calendar. It is a place to really easily log important days within that month, as well as birthdays and holidays and all of those types of things. There's also an emergency contact sheet. I think this is a really great planner for people to leave on the counter when someone is house sitting or when they're leaving the babysitter because it's just super well organized. So this has all of the family cell phone numbers, all of the doctor's numbers, neighbor's numbers, other important information. And then it also gives you this in case of emergency box where you could simply fill in all the details that you would want someone to know in case of an emergency. The next section is contacts. What I love is it divides it up into home and repair and gives you a place to put each business card. I really love this. My only hang up is I wish they would have given you more than one page of this. There's only one page so you can only fit eight business cards and we have way more than that. So I wish they offered some more refills to that. Then there is just a regular contact info sheet for friends and family that we're all so familiar with. The next section goes into projects. What I love about this is that it gives you a place to put the name of the project, the details, the to-do list, all of the information, and they give you a decent amount of project pages. Once again, paper quality super high, nothing bleeds through. The next section is meal planning. This is where you get the bulk of your pages. It gives you a place to meal plan for the entire week, as well as the grocery list for that week. I really, really love these pages. I plan on using them and keeping this binder out on our kitchen counter. Lastly is finances. It is a place to do your monthly budgets. It gives you enough months for the year. Um, it gives you a place to set monthly goals. It also breaks down all your kind of expenses throughout the month and gives you some place for some flexibility to add your own as well. And lastly, the heart of the home is the family bucket list. I really enjoy this page of like all the things your family wants to do in that year and an easy way to keep track and check them off. I think it's really beautiful. Overall, that home base binder planner is absolutely stunning. They do offer a binder on the website for this specific planner. Unfortunately, when I went to order, it was sold out, so I went ahead and ordered a custom binder. Once I get it, I'm going to be filling it up and we're going to be using this home base planner within our home, and I will definitely do a follow-up video on that. So, time for the next one. The next planner we're going to talk about is the Day Designer Planner. I know many of you are familiar with the Day Designer Planners. I bought my first Day Designer when it was still just an online shop and it came in that really heavy cardboard cover that we all loved with the gold corner pieces um, that kept it so sturdy. This is now also available at Target. And the first thing I noticed is that it doesn't come in that hardbound cover in this size. Instead, it is a very flimsy paper. And what I was shocked is that they have the heavy plastic on the front, but not the heavy plastic on the back. So it is literally just a piece of paper on the back. That instantly made me dislike this planner because throwing it in your bag, it is going to get bent and creased. And you know we are all planner perfectionists and that that will drive us 
crazy. But as far as the planner itself, it does have a lot of really great qualities. So let's go ahead and dive in. Like always, you have your personal information page and a how to use guide. I do appreciate that about the day designer planners that they have like a little how to guide for people who are just starting off because once again, this is at a really comfortable price point for many. It's $19.99 at Target. So I think it also allows you to dive into planning without making such a big financial commitment. I really like that it really walks you through your goal setting because so many of us don't know really how to think or process the kind of goals or steps we take to get there. So I really like this idea of having a section to really just set clear goals for yourself and your family. After it walks you through the goal setting, you go into your monthly spread. This one is dated, once again, starting at July 2017 and going till June 2018. The first thing that, well not the first thing, because I already told you I dislike the cover, I really don't like that they've kept the same color scheme throughout the planner, and it is like this lavendery, purpley, lilac color. So if you don't like purple, you have to look at it for the whole year, and I am not a purple fan. I feel like if you're going to stick with one simple color throughout the entire planner, you should really go super neutral with it instead of something that is so taste specific. I think if this would have been done in a gray scale or simply just black and white, it would have been a lot more appealing to me. But right now I wouldn't use this simply because even the tabs are all the same purple. It's just not something that I really enjoy. But you do get a really nice large monthly spread. And then after the monthly spread, this is one thing I think that this day planner does so well. You have a full page for every single weekday and a full page for the weekend. When you get to a weekday, you have the today schedule, which I appreciate that it starts at 6 a.m. and ends at 8 p.m. because those are my hours of operation. You have a place to put your top three things for the day, a place for to-dos, a place for notes, a place for just a tonight section, also a section for gratitude. And what I love about day designers, they always add inspirational quotes onto each and every page. Now, when you get a weekend spread, for example here, you have fun things to do, weekly gratitude, which is like a reflection for your week, then a small schedule for Saturday and Sunday, and don't forget boxes. And then, as you flip through the planner, it really stays consistent within those layouts. In the back of the planner, you have a place for notes. As you can see, look how flimsy. This is the back cover, and look how flimsy it is. And then lastly, what I appreciate is a big scope and sequence of all the holidays from 2017 to 2019. I really, really do enjoy that, but like, look at this cover. It's already showing bending and I bought it and haven't used it. I think the quality of this one is so much lower than what you would get if you purchased this online um, because I really do appreciate Day Designer. I just wish for a couple things that the coils were a little bit higher quality. These ones, I haven't even used this yet except for a couple flip throughs to get talking points down and they're all bent in different directions. Some are showing like huge gaps in between. This back cover is so flimsy that it's bent up at the corners and I haven't even ever used this. Um, I don't know, I think for $20 to see if you like planning, this is a worthwhile option. But beyond that, I don't think it is super heavy duty or really worth the money. I also think that it's really challenging when it's all one color scheme the whole way through. Now I will say if you're willing to splurge and spend the $54 at the online shop to get the hard bound planner system from Day Designer, then I think it's totally worth it because I do like the layout. I will say for the $20, the paper quality was still really high. I didn't get any bleed through with any of my Microline or Tombow pens, which was really nice to see. But as far as um, the quality of the Target line of day designers, um, I think for the price, it's fair, but I don't think this will wear very well throughout the year. The next planner I'm going to talk about is one that you recommended and asked me to do a review on, and that is the Get to Work book. So first of all, I can tell you what I already love about this planner so much. I love the black coils and the matte black cover, and this matte black cover, listen, 
It is super solid. I think that the corners will wear really, really well. I think that this is something that you can use heavy all year long and it's still going to look beautiful. I also love how beautiful, simple the color scheme is. It's just simple black and white. The tabs are really sleek and modern. Before we dive into the planner, I also wanna show you some of the really cute accessories that are available for purchase to go along with it. So one thing you can order is a band to close your planner. And I love it so much. And it says, big things happen one day at a time. And it's just a way for you to close it. And it's a nice like rubber one. It's not a fabric band. They also give you the today, not give you, you have to buy it, but the today bookmark. And it has a ruler on one end, but it's a nice way to mark each day. And it absolutely matches the way the tabs look. So the format is all the same. You can also purchase a set of task stickers that are really nice white with just black print. You also can order a bunch of little quote cards that I purchased. We'll talk a little bit more about those once we get into the planner. And then lastly, she has a list of 100 things for like a better life. And I had bought that card as well. There's just lots of really fun things on the website. I also bought this pep talk book that she offers online. Um, it's just a really great company. Shipping was super fast, super reliable. And when I did contact customer service, they were super responsive. So it's also a really great company and a really, really great planner. First things first, these coils are super strong and completely closed in. Um, and they're really big, which gives you a really easy time navigating the planner, which you'll see as we flip through. So when you get into your get to work planner, I love this idea of this theme of big things happen one day at a time and it kind of echoes. The first thing you get is a 2017-2018 at a glance. So you have every month for the year and just a really quick place to jot it down. This one once again goes from July 2017 to June 2018. Now, when you dive into each monthly spread, you get this page that is really heavy card stock before you dive into the actual planning for the month. It's also perforated so that you can eventually tear it out and keep the quote that is on the heavy card stock. That's why I also purchased this set that are already pre-torn out, pre-punched so that you still have them. Now, it's just beautiful quality. Then you get another heavy, heavy tab which just has a grid for projects for the month. Then you open it up and you get your monthly spread. This is just a really large calendar, really clean fonts, which you'll see the color scheme remains white and black and gray scaled the whole way through, which I love. You have a large section for notes at the bottom and also at a glance at the month before and the month after the current month that you're in. After your monthly spread, that is when you get your weekly spreads. Now, this is where I find this planner a little bit more challenging because for my days, I don't have enough writing, but I think I could timestamp these and make them work. What I love is it keeps a grayscale until the weekend and they're marked in black. You also have a place to put action items for the week as well as your top three tasks. This is where this planner runs out of space for me. My to-do list on the daily is really, really large. So it'd be really hard for me to make this work because I would have to keep my meeting schedule as well as my to-do list. And I just don't feel like I have enough places to write. But the paper quality is there. Nothing bled through when I tried it. It's just a really, really great planner. For people who don't have tons of meetings during the day that don't have to have a very like time sensitive schedule, I think this could work really well. I think for me, it's just gonna be really challenging in that aspect. And then really you keep that same system throughout the week. Once again, when you get to the end of a month, there's a place for you to reflect on goals. What I really like is it says last month wins, still in progress to let go of. I really think it's great to reevaluate and reflect on goals. Sometimes you set a goal that you really didn't need to set and it's really not important. So it's one that you can let go of. Things that might still be in progress where you're not there and ones that you really did accomplish. I think it's, sorry, there's something on my nose. I think it's a really, really easy way to build reflection around goals. And then once you get to your new month, you have that really heavy card stock, that really heavy gridded project page. And then you dive into 
your monthly setup again, where you do your new goals for the month, and you have that same exact layout. I really, really think this planner is beautifully done. I think it is really sturdy. I think it is worth the money. I think it is trendy and matches so many different people's aesthetics. I just really, really enjoy it. And I would highly recommend it to everyone. Um, it's one that I definitely will consider diving into and seeing if I if I timestamp those lines on the daily spreads, if I can make it work for me. Um, I just really haven't dove into it closely enough to see if it'll work for my day to day. But I think the quality is there. I think the accessories are fun that you can purchase. I think that it looks super hip and super cool. Um, I just think it's a really great planner. The next planner we're going to talk about is the one that I got the most questions about, and that is the 52-week journal happiness planner. Um, this is, once again, one of those niche planners. So this isn't for like your day-to-day -day task list. However, it is a daily, a weekly planner that really is all about tracking your happiness and growth throughout the 52 weeks of a year. And what I really, really enjoy about this planner is that it comes with an app. So before we dive into the planner, I'm going to show you a little bit about the app. What I love about this app is you got your monthly spread where it has all the things you would want to plan to do's meals, but then you can go into your happiness roadmap. It has the same exercises as the planner. So what makes you happy? What makes you unhappy? What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Um, what qualities or habits do you want to improve? Who are you grateful for? What do you like to see more often in your life? What have you achieved or what are you proud of? What have you overcome? Um, lessons you've learned. What is your definition of success? What are your dreams? What do you want to achieve in life? Where do you want to be in 10 years? Where do you want to be in five years? I also think it breaks it up personally and professionally, which I really appreciate it. I just think this is a really, really great app as a companion to the Happiness Planner. Now, do I think you need to have both? I don't because so many of the exercises you do in the app are also the exercises that you work through in the planner. But I do think it's kind of nice to have it in two locations and I just like the option of that electronic. If you don't want to buy the actual planner, you get all the same things from the app. So you can have it electronically or you can have this hardbound planner that I am in love with. When you get into the planner, the first thing you have is a slip pocket. I will tell you there's nothing you're going to put in here unless it's a sticker sheet, which you don't need stickers for this planner, but it seems flimsy. But I think it's just there as a novelty. I don't think it's there for heavy use. Then it talks you through exactly how you're going to use the planner. It also gives you this 26 rules to live by for a happier and more fulfilling life. I love anything like this. Anything that tells me um, little bullets and one of the ones near the bottom is just be kind, which I really, really enjoy. Then it goes into about creating your happiness, exactly what you're going to work through within the 52 weeks. And then literally, it is exactly what I just unpacked in the app for you. What makes you happy? What makes you unhappy? Your strengths, your weaknesses. It is the same exact set of exercises that you would work through. So once you get through all the exercises, you get into a quick 2017-2018 glance. And then you get into your first week. Now, when you go through this, there are several tabs and they chunk them into weeks of five. So between each tab are five full weeks. Now, this is not for planning out your day-to-day -day life. It is really about tracking your happiness and those kinds of aspects of your life. So you get to talk about what you're excited about, what are your goals for work and personal that week, what happy things you will do during the week, and then a place to jot down or journal for each day of the week, Monday through Sunday. Then there's a reflection page. This is what I'm most excited to dive into. You get to reflect for that whole entire week. So once the week is over, you say, describe the week in three words, talk about how you felt but around happiness, boredom, your energy levels, your stress levels, and your healthy habits. Then you get to talk about like this week's highs, the week's lows, what you learned this week, who and what I was grateful for this week, and what I'd like to improve and what I hope for for the next week. 
Then you repeat the cycle for week two. Same thing, goal trackers, daily log sheets, and then that same reflection section. And it goes through that for the 52 weeks of the year. Every week stays exactly the same. What I really enjoy is after you have finally finished week 52, there is a page for you to do your 52 week review. So where was your happiness? Where was your stress? Where was your healthy habits? And you really get to go through and log everything. And then there's a reflection section for the 52 week review. So describe the past year in three words. What was your most common state of mind? What were your happiest moments? What were the little things that you enjoyed on a daily basis? What new skills did you learn? What personal qualities or habits did you develop? I, I really love that you then reflect on the entire year when you've reflected so thoughtfully on the 52 weeks that were within that year. Um, once again, the quality of this planner is super high. I love a planner that puts these metal tabs on the corners. So the first thing to go in a planner are the corners and these really do lend a lot of protection. I think someone who is looking to increase happiness in goal setting and to really have a nice log of a year, I think this is a great planner. This is one that I'm going to be using right alongside my daily, weekly, monthly planner. I'm just really, really excited about it. And I think it's a really great option, especially for all of you. And I know I connect with so many of you around kindness and improving your life and improving your habits and just living the best, most authentic life you can. I think this is a really great planner to push so many of us out of our comfort zones. And I really like that if you don't want to have this physical planner in hand, you always have that app option as well to work through. So. Really, really great, 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 great. And lastly, I could not do a planner review without discussing the Erin Condren Life Planner. Now, I went ahead and customized this. This is by far the most expensive planner in the bunch. I think after the customization, it was either between $68 and $80. So it is pricey. It is for someone who is going to plan and use this every day. I opted for that leather fill, really heavy duty cover. I got it embossed in silver with my name and I opted for the black coils, which I really enjoy. I think this looks really, really sleek. And then I flipped it over and they put that Erin Condren flower on the back. For someone who likes it really sleek and simple, I wish there would have been a back view. Honestly, I wouldn't have bought this had I known that that was on the back. I was really, really disappointed with it. I don't like it. I, I just was really unhappy with it. If any of you have an idea on how I can cover it up, please do because I'm really unhappy with it. Um, anyway, that's besides the point. The front I love. I love the sleek black. I love the silver embossed. I love this grayish beige cover. It's super heavy duty. I feel like it'll wear really, really well. And then I, of course, went with this neutral theme. I also love this black and white vellum with that neutral theme. I think it just is really high quality and beautiful. And then I opted for the vertical layout. Once again, in true Aaron Condren fashion, there are really inspirational, beautiful quotes. My one thing is, if you opt for the neutral theme, I really truly believe that the whole thing should be neutral. So it should all be grayscaled, black and white, and super neutral. And there are still lots of areas where they add color. So in these sketches, there are color, not within the calendars, but then they do add a lot of little touches of color. And if it's gonna be a neutral theme, I think they should go all out and make it a true neutral theme. So you have a place to write down some dreams and some plans for the year, as well as some goal setting pages for the year, but they're not tied to goal setting. I would use them for goal setting, like here are my goals, here's how I'm gonna achieve them, any additional notes, um, but they're not flagged as that, so you could definitely use them as something else, whether it is future planning or re remembering upcoming dates. Every month is assigned a color scheme, and it stays true to that color scheme and you get it in the flag and in some of the banners. And it's super simple, super clear, a place to write to-dos and then lots of nice blank space to write in the boxes. I went for the vertical layout so it's divided into three sections. I'm, 
I don't know why I went with the vertical layout. I'm definitely not a horizontal planner, but they do have an hourly stamped one. That's the one I should have went for, but for some reason I went vertical. So you have a box for morning, afternoon, evening, which I guess I can stamp with times and make work. Lots of great place and space to write to-do lists and bullets such as that. But as far as like a daily to-do list, you're really limited in the amount of space you have to write. I know for my life, I need a daily to-do list. Really for the month, it stays exactly the same. And once you get to the next month, you have a new color scheme. So this one is a yellowish color scheme. Same goal setting pages. And then once again, you go into your monthly spread, your weekly spread until you get to the next month. One thing I will say about this planner right off the bat is Erin Condren's paper feels a lot different than what I had purchased maybe two, three years ago. The paper quality is super thick. It also has like a very nice texture to it. Tried my microline pens, tried my Sharpie pens, tried my Tombow pens, nothing bled through this paper quality, which was a huge bonus. Towards the end of the planner, you do get lots of note-taking sheets. You also get some gridded pages as well which I don't know how I necessarily use those. People who use the gridded dotted lines, let me know how you use them because there's not enough to do like bullet journals, but you do like a yearly collection. Um, any tips or suggestions for how to use these gridded lines or how you use your note section of your Erin Condren, please leave it down below. I'd love to see how you use those pages. Then there are some coloring sheets, which I think are pretty unnecessary. I don't know, that's just me. Um, and then what I do enjoy is that it gives you a lot of future planning. So this is the whole 2019 year. So things that I know that are upcoming in 2019, as we work our way through 2018, I have a place to log them. I really, really appreciate that kind of forward planning. Next are the pages for the stickers. They are beautifully foiled, beautiful colors. Really not the colors that I would use. Once again, if it's the neutral theme, I really wish they would do like a neutral pack of stickers. I know it might be a lot to add, but these in grayscale with the foil would be absolutely gorgeous. Um, once again, then there are some like calendar planning stickers and then your normal Erin Condren stickers that we have become so used to. And lastly, a nice heavy duty slip pocket in the front and a shorter, shallower one in the back and then that wretched flower on the back cover. Um, overall, it is really, really a great planner. I think if you're willing to make the investment, um, it's, it's the quality is there for the price that you pay. I think they're a beautiful planner. They're just some little tweaks I wish they'd make based off of um, doing a true neutral color scheme. But hey, that's just my opinion. All right, everyone, so that is my review of those eight planners. I hope you really, really enjoyed this video. It has been a lot of fun to put together. If this is something you would like to see more often, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That way you can have a great idea of what planners are out there. As always, leave any comments or questions that I didn't answer down below, and I will be sure to answer it as quickly as possible. In the meantime, I will leave this video like I leave all of my videos. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and be kind. Kindness is free, my friends. Give it to everyone. Until next time, bye-bye.